Hey everybody, Lloyd the Backman here from Sarah's Back Shack, located at 1108 Cloquet Avenue, Cloquet, Minnesota. You can also check us out at sarahsvacshack.com. We're also on Facebook and YouTube. What I wanted to do today is I wanted to do a quick video on how to take apart an Epic 6500. Back in 2010 on our Facebook page, you'll see a video that we posted there on how to take one of these apart. Since then, uh, we've come up with a much easier and uh, a better way for you guys to be able to take these apart uh, if you don't have a lot of experience. Uh, the first thing, I want to tell you is that if you are not comfortable uh, with your amount of experience in taking something like this apart, I recommend that you take it to your local vacuum repair shop, have them take care of it. Um, this is not a, uh, you, you have to have a little bit of mechanical aptitude in order to be able to do it, but hopefully we make it a little bit simpler for you today. So the first thing I want to tell everybody is make sure that the unit is not plugged in when you go to take the unit apart, super important. Uh, this one has a broken cord reel, so the cord is hanging out, but you want to make sure that it, you unplug it from the wall. Uh, second thing that we've learned is that when you want to take it apart, there are these two slider strips on the side. And so what we need to do is we need to actually remove those in order to separate the top half from the bottom half. Um, this repair video, by the way, will work for not only the Epic 6500, but it'll also work for the Epic 6000. It's going to work for the majority of the ambassadors, any of the plastic bodied uh, old tube type canisters uh, this video repair video will be good for but uh, what you want to do is you want to open up the bag door you can go ahead and pull the bag out keep in mind that this unit will not turn on without a bag installed into the unit the two tools that you're going to need are you're going to need a mallet or a hammer and a really large flathead screwdriver one of, the, one of the neat tips that I actually learned from one of my employees is that the easiest way to take these apart and put them back together is actually uh, with them laying on their top. So once you open up the bag door, go ahead and lay it on its top like this. And then what we're going to do, if we get you to zoom in here real close, what we're going to do is we're going to put this flathead screwdriver right in between the bumper and the back there. Okay. You take your rubber mallet and you're going to give it a good whack so that it separates right here. And you may have to keep pounding it, but that's going to slide forward towards the front of the bag door here. And then you'll just slide it all the way out like so. Go ahead and repeat that process for the other side. As you can tell, this one has already been taken apart a few times same process and slide it slide it out so when you go to take it apart you're just going to pull out on each one of these sides like so you may need to pull your cord out a little bit give yourself about six to eight inches of slack in your cord so that you get this off If you just lay it down like this, if you'll bring the camera up so that we can show just how it sits here. So again, much easier if you take it apart on its top. You can see that whole process took very little time, right? Now you have access to your cord reel, you have access to the motor, um, the bag chamber. One thing that you want to do is you want to keep pay really close attention to how your wires are connected, both to the motor, the cord reel, and to the little switch box up here. So, or the lockout. So one of the things that I found is super helpful, use your camera. Go ahead and take a picture of these lead wires and then make sure that you mark them and where they go uh, before you take them all off. We've received a lot of phone calls that will say, where does the blue wire go? Where does the orange wire go? Where does the white wire go? The trouble is throughout all of these series of units, they use different, co different colored wiring uh, between the units. Uh, so knowing uh, having you call and say where does the blue wire go doesn't really help uh, it's easier if you just take pictures beforehand um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna break this down to the simplest form uh, to show you guys how to uh, how to take care of it so you just pop these wires off like so we take off there's four on this unit uh, if you have a classic or an ambassador you're only gonna have a couple of couple of lead wires here if you have one of the newer units I believe that there's two that connect to the back here and then what you're gonna find is you're gonna find the cord reel and the uh, motor unit are actually connected right here with this one lead so if you pull this out just a little bit pull it 
pull up on it, pull back on the cord reel, the cord reel is separated. So, you know, if you were just replacing the cord reel, that's all the further you would need to go. The cord just pops right out of here. You can put the cord reel uh, back into it and reverse the process and you'd be good to go. Uh, to pull the motor unit out, just pull the wires back, lift the motor unit out, and you can access that. One of the most common problems that we see with these are actually the lockout valve uh, that sits underneath this, excuse me, underneath of this bag chamber. So in order to get to it, what we're going to need to do is pull all these wires off. With this little guy, this is the little guy that stops the unit from running if the bag's not installed properly. You see it operates on a real basic switch with a cam system here. There's a little spring attached to it. Make sure that you don't lose that, set it aside. Okay, then you can go ahead and lift this off as well. So the guy that usually causes the problems is this lockout valve in the back, right here. And if we can get up, it's this guy right here. So there's just a couple of rubber seals and uh, uh, some real, th uh, real thin plastic dial in the inside here. And so a lot of times what we see is this will break and what will happen is that as soon as the unit feels suction, it'll just shut down and it gives you the full bag indicator. Um, you can replace this part. They're available on, on eBay or on Amazon. Uh, typically they run about 35 to $40. Uh, or another thing you can do is you can just bypass it. And what that's going to do is it's going to stop the lockout from functioning. So essentially what will happen is that your unit, uh, if you disconnect this, your unit will not shut off when the bag is full. You're just going to have to pay attention to the amount of suction that you have at the end of the hose. And when you run out of suction or there's no power there, the bag is probably full, check it, replace it, and you'll be back, back going again. So the easiest way, and you can see we've disconnected this one, the easiest way to disconnect that feature is just to pull this rubber tube right here off of this, um, off this flange, pop that off, the whole thing is disconnected and this won't be a problem for you again in the future. So I'm gonna put it back together here real quick. Uh, you guys can watch me again. Uh, my name is Lloyd from Sarah's Back Shack uh, in Cloquet, Minnesota. You can find us on Amazon, you can find us on Facebook, uh, also YouTube. I hope this video makes repairing your Electrolexes a little bit easier if you do decide to do it yourself. Bring on here. And since we disconnected this, we're just going to throw that down there. Make sure you get all your wires tucked back into place so that they don't get pinched when you put the unit back together. Well, this should connect these, huh? Again, it really helps if you have these marked. We've taken this one apart and put it back together several times, so we're quite familiar with it. take your unit apart you're going to see that there's little ridges in here that both the core reel and the motor um, slide into so when you go to put the bottom back on we're going to call it the top because it's on the top now when you put the top back on uh, if it's not lining up properly just pull up on this side and take a look up in there make sure that everything is lined up properly and then it should slide right back down the last thing you got to do is right here there's a couple of clips And I'm making it look a lot harder than it actually is. There we go. So when you're done, just take a feel of it, and the gap should be even across on both sides. And once you have that, go ahead and flip it back over. Now on these little slides, what we found is that uh, 
a lot of times I like to, you, you'll notice right here, there's a couple of little dimples, if you will. And so when you slide this down, what it does is it locks in place and this won't move forwards and backwards. If you think you're going to be going into the unit again, uh, a really handy thing to do is just take a needle nose pliers and push those down because then it'll make the next time you need to go into the unit super easy. My chair is in the way here. They'll slide in and slide out a lot easier uh, without so much without so much trouble. Just like so. Well, I hope that makes taking your Electrolux apart a lot easier uh, than the last video that we shot for you guys. Um, Take a look at our other how-to videos that are posted on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. Give our Facebook page a like if you can. Again, my name is Lloyd from Sarah's Vac Shack in Cloquet. Uh, we'll see you the next time.